I want to start out by apologizing for not videotaping this. I meant to, and I just kind of got busy that day. Uh, so I ended up at least taking pictures of this while I was doing it. I bought a 2006 uh, LBZ Duramax, uh, knowing on the front side that the glow plug was uh, broken off um, for cylinder number eight, which is the driver's side rear glow plug. Um, so I decided to put together this video of how I deal with those. I've deal with, dealt with a couple of them. And at, or at the end of the slideshow, I'll put a couple of the kind of horror story ones where the tip breaks off and you end up having to pull the head out. I haven't quite found a good way on those yet. Uh, so at any rate, let's get the video rolling here. Um, first picture is going to be of what a good look one looks like. That's what it should look like when you come to it. Um, a little tiny nut, a wire, and then below that is a... Um, I think it's a 10 or 11 millimeter nut or bolt. It's like a bolt head, but it's the whole glow plug body. So second picture rolling into this is what I came to. Uh, someone had broken the top off of it. And you can't tell in this picture really, but that's actually a beta weld. Someone already tried welding on it. Uh, there's two different ways these things can break off in this um, situation. And that's, they can break off uh, with the electrode still through the center which would not allow you to get a easy out into it or in this case they can break off with the electrode still in the center I didn't know that until after I broke their weld off but uh, that doesn't allow you any space to get an easy out in I didn't really want to mess with that electrode I didn't want it to break off the tip or do anything like that so I just figured let's carry on with the weld I've done that method before and had success so first step I did is took a little handheld sandblaster you can see it in the picture here just a cheap one you can get Harbor Freight one I've had this thing for 10 years I don't even maybe it was Harbor Freight I don't know um, at any rate I uh, cleaned up the area anytime you're welding on something you want to get uh, the metal nice and clean and uh, you know, free of corrosion, otherwise your first couple welds aren't going to hold no matter what you try. So yeah, grab the sandblaster. This is a picture of it. Now you can tell for sure that they had welded it. Um, but yeah, clean the rust off, cleaned out. I didn't sandblast it very long. It doesn't take much. Just get it, just get the top layer off there. And then uh, we grab the wire feed welder. I have a uh, Vulcan MIGMAX 215 wire feed welder from Harbor Freight. I love it. It works phenomenally. Uh, just some little, uh, I think they're 6 millimeter nuts, uh, 13 millimeter head. Uh, just slide the nut halfway on it and fill the hole up with weld. Um, normally you get a couple of these. There's another picture of, I think this is the second one. Uh, don't get beat up over the welds breaking it's very easily easy to get frustrated um so i had a couple welds break the first few i think in here there's somewhere a picture of my st yeah that's the first stack of failures um in between those uh, you'd get a little bit of heat down into the head which is a good thing um to penetrate down and f fracture up that rust or corrosion and then i'd uh, use a uh, inforce or kimball's penetrant uh and then you know kind of saturate the the glow plug base where the threads start uh and then i would use a little propane torch to dry up where i was going to weld again because uh, again you don't want to try welding on top of a penetrant you're not gonna get the penetration of the weld that you need um and there's the there's the final one you can see just a stack of weld that i put on top of that thing um, and it popped free. I did run into an issue with it being a little bit offset, so it scraped against the head as it was rotating, so that was kind of nerve-wracking because I didn't know how much material was there. Uh, but yeah, victory. Uh, these last two pictures are a uh, Duramax that I dealt with. Uh, actually, same here, I think. Um, this one, they were doing a tune-up, or uh, not tune-up, a glow plug tune-up, uh, out of maintenance and a couple of the tips stayed in the heads 
Uh, so it got towed over to my my shop, and uh, yep, <laughs> that's what we ended up doing. Uh, we didn't crank the key after the tips came out. We didn't. Uh, I mean, I've heard of some guys gambling and trying to push them out, running it, and man, if it goes in, you're hosed. So we pulled the heads off, cleaned up the heads, uh, he had them machined, and uh, ended up having a couple things. We put a downpipe and head studs and that kind of stuff in that truck. But yeah, just uh, this is my experience, my method of doing it. Um, if you can get a easy out in there, like if the center electrode is missing, I think it's worth doing, um, or at least giving a shot. If the center electrode is not in there, or if it is in there, um, I, I believe the welding method is is by far the best because you're also putting that additional heat into that. And uh, as we all know, aluminum and steel uh, don't expand at the same rate. So that helps fracture free the, the glow plug. Um, and don't get frustrated. Um, you know, you just got to keep trucking at it and, you know, buy a handful of nuts and just expect that you're going to go through them. Uh, but also know that if, if you pull that glow plug out and it's missing the tip, uh, man, it's a, it's a gamble. I, I, I personally wouldn't even twist the key after that point. I would plan on pulling the head. Um, but thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, thank you.